Um, to, hey, 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 hey. Uh, sorry, we got a neighbor <laughs> walking by. and he just, He's he's a freaking French bulldog. He weighs like 30 pounds and he thinks he's like the toughest guy in the neighborhood. Hey guys, James Austin Taylor here from Rock Sound with another of our video calls. We're catching up and chatting with everybody while we're stuck in lockdown at the minute. But I'm delighted to say from August Burns Red, Jack is on the line now. How are you, Jack? Good, doing well. How are you doing? Not too bad, man. Who's this lovely visitor we've got here? Uh, this is Winston Finnegan. He's my son. And uh, him and I have spent a lot of quality time together this past month. So it's been good. I can imagine. Nice to have. I'm very jealous of a lot of dog odors at the minute. It's nice to, nice to have some company around the house. That's lovely. Yeah, it is. He's, we're, we're, we're best friends. We, we do pretty much everything together. And uh, it is. It's nice because... You know, um, I just enjoy, you know, waking up and having to, you know, take them for a walk or, you know, watch TV together, or whatever, you know, whatever we're going to do. So it's, it's nice. It's a good thing. Nice He's a good one, guy. Man. Nice. Good stuff. Uh, yeah. We've obviously, you know, it's good to see that you're keeping safe, keeping well at the moment uh, in this kind of crazy, crazy time. Uh, I do obviously want to ask you in particular, you've just had an album release week, man, in the weirdest kind of time you could have one. How was that for you? How's your release week been in these kind of, unusual circumstances sure yeah that's a good question i i, I feel like um <clears throat> it went as well if not better than we had anticipated with all the with all the concerns and with all the crazy things going on right now i mean we we had set it up pretty like solid because we were going on tour with kill switch engage and um you know so we had a great rollout plan and then it kind of all got smothered and tainted by obviously the COVID-19. Um, but with that being said, the lyrical content on, on our new record guardians is very much so about community unity, um, helping each other, no matter the differences or perspectives that you have on one another is to like come together. So uh, I feel like, um, you know, cause there was a moment where we were thinking maybe we should postpone this, but we didn't because it, we feel like it was really, a good thing for our fans to listen to right now. And, and hopefully has from what we've heard been very encouraging to them. So um, it's, it's gone really well considering all things. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's nice. Um, in the piece you did recently in the magazine with us as well, you guys were saying that particularly lyrically on this album, you, you felt like you had the confidence now to talk about really real topics and actually sharing something real, I believe was the phrase that was going around in that particular article. Um, and I guess no more, more important a phrase to go around than now, you know, how's that connection with the, with the fans? How have those reactions been now they can actually hear the record out there? Yeah, it's been really good. Um, <clears throat> I think we surprised some fans because th this album is relatively aggressive and heavier than the previous album. And, um, you know, a lot of people were saying, oh, well, you know, we kind of thought you guys were going to get a little lighter or go in this direction. And um, we kind of on this record, I guess, stayed more to the foundational roots and like the fundamentals of what ABR is, you know. And um, But lyrically, we did stand out with, you know, trying to bring some just really raw, authentic, from the heart um, experiences that we've gone through um, individually or as a band. and again because a lot of those a lot of the undertones to the lyrics are about putting aside your own uh judgments or um you know morals and values and just learning to have the willingness of grace and understanding um really has gone a long way for this particular time with uh, the fans kind of you know kind of understanding that like okay we need to work together as a team um, or, you know, maybe, maybe some of the lyrical content has given them a place, uh, or time to self-reflect and to think to themselves, like, man, where have I personally not forgiven or where have I just been so judgmental towards someone that, you know, they don't deserve that, you know, or, or things like that. And so we've heard a lot of stories of like how, you know, they've really enjoyed um, the lyric content because it does make them think a little more about those particular um, areas of their heart or their minds. So <clears throat> it's been really good to hear that because 
you know, we've been a band for a long time. It's like almost like, I don't know, 15 years, uh, you know. And so to hear that we have this overwhelming positive response to our music is just a good feeling, right? Like it just, it's, it's nice to know that our art is still appreciated and that we're not just looked at as like, oh, you know, those guys, you know, they do the same thing every time or whatever, but that our music is actually still um, worth something to someone or, or valued or appreciated and, and honored. And then it's still doing something in our music scene. So I, I mean, you know, we, we got some crazy numbers. We had some crazy, you know, responses. Um, so a lot of really great things have come from this. And, and honestly, I'm, I'm just humbled and thankful and, and excited that people are that pumped on it. Yeah, absolutely, man. And, and again, you know, you talk about the fan connection, particularly lyrically. And, you know, you were talking about some heavy stuff and stuff from personal experience and all that kind of thing. Was it a difficult transition to make? I mean, you've always had a level of honesty to your lyrics and stuff, but was it, well, how was that process of being, being that open and that honest as you go into a new record cycle? I think that we have always been fairly honest with our lyrical content. And, you know, we're not a type of band that is like a concept band or, or writing about, you know, heartbreak every single track. Um, but I think it was just like, if we can just take it a little deeper, uh, if we can just go to that next level, you know? And um, so like one of the, one of the songs is really about Matt, my drummer, Matt going through a really nasty time in his life. And um, he, he shares that in interviews and stuff. Um, but like, you know, it's, it's, it, it was cool to see him having the vulnerability to open up and share like that. And so I'm, it's kind of cool because I'm kind of seeing from my own bands who I know very well, my own bandmates, you know, obviously. And like, but to see them like go into a new place for themselves as an artist was really, really amazing to see that. And the understanding that like, we're going to get vulnerable for a minute. We're going to sacrifice like our pride or maybe some of our, you know, because it's hard to open up sometimes and be vulnerable, but we're going to be you know, put out some vulnerability in exchange for knowing or hoping that it's going to make a positive impact, you know? Um, and I think that that was one of the things that I personally saw from my, from the writers, you know, for the lyrical, lyrical standpoint, excuse me, that I was really, um, I was really proud of them for. Yeah, no, it's, it's nice to see and nice to see, you know, what, what could be viewed by some as a risk you guys saw as an opportunity, I would say. It's just nice to open up in that way. It's really, really good. And I think, again, that's reflected in the title of the record, which again, you mentioned in the mag already, but Guardian seems very, very appropriate. Talk to me about settling on that as the album title as a whole. Yeah, so that was actually the name for Lighthouse, I think it was. Or we have a track called Lighthouse and we were going to call it Guardians. Um, and I think, you know, when we, when we kind of talked about all of the lyrical content, to some shape or form, it's the lyrics have to deal with, you know, unity, love, forgiveness, um, nurturing, grace, um, acceptance, you know, um, and all of those things, the, all the, all of that kind of, I feel like attributes to what a guardian is and that's a protector, a provider, a nurturer. Um, and so, you know, and this is before, I mean, we didn't even know the COVID-19 thing was, you know, going to happen. Right. So, but we just thought, man, like that's really, I think what embraces what the album's about. And we wanted to kind of preach a message of like, Hey, like, because it, it's it's titled guardians with an s so it's plural meaning that there's not one guardian and so what we wanted to share with our fans was like hey you can be a guardian for someone beside you you know in your community or your or your family or friends like we can all be guardians and like we can all help one another and we can all choose to put our political views or our religious beliefs aside for the person in front of us in order to love them and um, help them in a time of need. So that was kind of the message that we felt the whole album incorporated and we thought Guardians was a good, was a good fit for that. It's so interesting that you're not the first person to have said it to me and in these, these chats we've been having, but how 
songs that either have come out a while back or have just been released like you guys have they just suddenly take on a slightly different meaning or a slightly new kind of depth to them because of the situation that we're in you must have found that yourself yeah definitely um and it's really good for me to like sometimes i'll listen to the record and i'll and i'll try to kind of step away from it um from being one of the artists um to, hey, 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 hey. Uh, sorry, we got a neighbor <laughs> walking by. and he, he's, he's a freaking French bulldog. He weighs like 30 pounds, and he thinks he's like the toughest guy in the neighborhood. <laughs> and it's just like, bro, you got to stop. Protecting the house. That's, that's what's all good. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Does yeah. he get freaked out by neighbors, or is he uh, generally just, just watching territory? You know, yeah, he's just watching territory, man. He... he you know, he'll get all a tough guy, but then when he gets up to the person, he, he never bites anybody. He'll just sniff them out and then walk away. Like, uh, he doesn't have a, a mean bone in his body, but, um, sorry. I <laughs> don't, I don't dare apologize. We're all about the dog content. That's all good. Don't worry about that. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, you were saying. I, I kind of lost my train of thought. Um, what was I just saying before? Winston well, we were just saying about, uh, the, about the, how you're able to uh, kind of oh. step away from being just the yeah. artist, actually listening in a new light a little bit. Right, exactly. So like, you know, just the, the, the fact that um, I can listen to the music and go, okay, you know, not, not really try to look at it from my perspective as the artist who wrote it, but outside of that. And what I think was really great was that we did kind of keep the lyrical content like focus on a subject, but broad enough for people to really just be able to digest it as and take it on for themselves. Right. And so when I'm before the COVID thing, you know, one of these songs would hit me about, you know, a family member of mine. And then, you know, I would revisit that song now. And now it hits me about my community, my neighborhood, not my family. And so, yeah, it, does, it definitely, this whole thing I think has just stirred up everyone and, um, which is, which I, I think the good about this is that I'm hoping that people can realize that no matter after this is all over, no matter where you go in the world, um, I live in Pennsylvania, let's say I go to Germany, right. And I go to Berlin and I meet another human being there. I already have something in common with that person. We already have similarities because there was at one point in both of our lives, at the exact same time, we were both fighting fear, anxiety, stress, doubt, worry about this COVID-19 thing. And so immediately, I've already got this connection with this person without even knowing them at all. And then what I'm hoping is that humanity, you know, when we have a choice, and we always do, is to choose love in that moment. And instead of being like, Oh, look, you know, like trying to race to the line to get your bagel or, or, you know, whatever that you like, Hey man, go ahead, get in there. You know, like, can I help you? Or, Oh, you need some change. Like here's some change, you know, because it's like, dude, like we only have ourselves, each other. And the, the clearer of that understanding, the more I feel like we can move in a direction of love and, um, you know, and grace for each other, you know? Yeah, again, it's, it's the interesting thing. Lots of people have been talking about these first shows when whenever this all gets sorted down, we're finally able to get in sweaty rooms and watch some rock shows again. But like you say, that's going to be the overriding feeling, isn't it? A sense of relief, a sense of community, a sense of unity in that way. You must be so excited in particular to be able to, hopefully at some point, be able to get back out on the road and play these new songs that are just out there in the world. That was one of the most dis, like, disheartening things about that tour ending because I mean, okay, first off, I, you know, when I was younger, I mean, I, obviously Killswitch Engage has influenced me or, you know, made some level of impact. I mean, those guys are pioneers, right? So it's like, you know, so then to be on tour with them for the record, we, we spent hours and hours in pre-production and rehearsal getting these new songs ready. And then literally in three days of the tour, it's like, just go home, you know? Um, we've been itching to be on the road before this all happens. So yeah, by the time this is over, I think we're just going to go out guns blazing. And, uh, you know, I mean, shows I think are going to be 10 times more extreme and intense. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what, what, how it affects the, the community, the industry.
Yeah, it's going to be really interesting. I think there's going to be a lot of things that are going to have to be sorted about and talked about. But it, from just a basic point of view, God, those first shows are going to be absolutely outrageous, yeah. man. That's going to be a yeah. party right there, for sure, yeah. for sure. Um, so I'll leave you with this then. In terms of uh, where we're at now, and obviously everyone trying to work for a moment, figure out new kind of creative ways to do stuff. Uh, I guess music-wise, you know, you guys have just put out the record there, but how, have you thought about other things you can do in terms of, you know, keeping that fan community going, stuff online? Have you guys talked about all those kind of things yet? Well, we, we've done some things. We have some things in the works that I can't share necessarily as far as a band. But I think also, you know, the band members individually have, you know, gone down different avenues to keep moving and engaging our fans on social media. Um, you know, what What I've started doing, is, which is kind of funny and a lot of fun, was... Um, I don't know if you're familiar with first reaction videos, uh, what those are, but basically it's a person recording themselves, listening to a song for the very first time and then discussing the song afterwards. I had never heard of those before in my life. And then I stumbled upon some when we released our single Defender and a band did, did um, a first reaction video for us. And I found that and I was like, well, this is really cool. Like I didn't even know this existed. And so I reached out to the band. I said, look, you send me your single and I'll do my first reaction to your, your single. Um, so they were super pumped on that. We did it. I, I pushed it on my social media. And then my fans were just like, dude, you got to do this band, do this band, do this song, do that song. So now, like, uh, now I'm a video editor. So if you need any video editing, oh, uh, come to me. Ideal. <laughs> we can work together on this. Here we go. We're all sorted. The team is working. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a new thing I've had to learn. Um, and it's a uh, boy, that's a lot of work. Um, but I just kind of taken on, you know, doing this because it's multifaceted. It, it, it helps me engage my fans and do something fun. It gets them excited, brings them some joy, maybe some, some laughter. And then also I get to, you know, promote and, celebrate my peers you know the guys i've girls and guys i've gone on tour with bands i i love and respect like i have the opportunity to share their music with with more you know more people um and so i've i've and i've actually had requests from certain bands saying like dude you know you should do this we're you know we're coming out with this like um if you don't mind like that'd be awesome you know and it's like cool yeah like what else am i gonna do right so like i just want to give back to my community and like uh, my fans and just try to enjoy this as much as I possibly can, um, you know, while still, you know, committing to the seriousness effect, you know, and, and everything that, that it entails. But, you know, like just because this is a troublesome time doesn't mean that we have to, um, you know, bask in that we can, we can choose to find joy and, and good in, in the, in the things that we currently have. And, and you know what I mean? So I'm trying to do that as, as best as I can. And that's, that's it. I'm doing first reaction videos on YouTube. Hey man, that's, that sounds good to me. That's a great idea. And definitely, like you say, a good outlet. I'm glad you're finding stuff to do and finding new creative <laughs> things to concentrate on. It's all good, man. And uh, yeah, just wise words and congrats again on the record and all the best to you and Thanks. all your loved ones. And uh, yeah, we'll catch Thanks, up face to face when this madness is all over, I'm sure. Yeah, sounds great. Thanks for your time, man. I appreciate it. No, of course, man. All right, Jacob. Bye.